Hello everyone, my name is Carly Jensen and I'm a fellow with the Civil War Institute at Gettysburg College. Today I'm out on the battlefield at Culp's Hill. Culp's Hill had heavy fighting all three days of the Gettysburg campaign. This was unique because it had fighting all three days of the battle, which is unique to any hill involved in the Gettysburg battle. Most of the fighting involved Johnson's Confederate Brigade, which was formerly under the control of Stonewall Jackson, and the Union troop, troops of the 12th Army Corps under the command of Henry Slocum. On the evening of July 2nd, the Union Army had the high ground here at Culp's Hill. However, a substantial part of the Army was called away to help um, the Union left flank, which was being attacked by Longstreet's assault. This gave the Confederates what they believed was an amazing opportunity. Lee ordered that Confederate troops should attack Culp's Hill, and so about, about 5,000 soldiers marched up the hill to attack the remaining 1,400 Union soldiers, which were a part of General George Green's brigade. This was the biggest numerical advantage the Confederates would see throughout the Gettysburg Campaign. When Johnson's men attacked just before sunset, they thought they were going to have an amazing advantage, an easy victory. However, they went headfirst right into the earthworks that General Greene's men had created. The smoke from the gunpowder and the quickly approaching nightfall created just enough chaos that Johnson's men were forced to retreat and enough Union troops were able to arrive to reinforce General Greene's men. The severely outnumbered Union troops were able to hold off the Confederates attacked throughout the night. Just before sunrise, the battle resumed, and although the Confederates attacked three separate times, they were not able to take Culp's Hill. It was during this bloody fighting that Edwin Forbes sketched his account of the battle. Forbes, who was a New York City native, studied art and became a staff artist for Frank Leslie's illustrated newspaper in 1861. He was sent to it to uh, to sketch battles just like this one, which is how he ended up here at Culp's Hill on the evening of July 2nd. The original sketch depicts Union troops charging up the hill with the Confederate battle flag waving. At the top of the hill, you can also see Union flags. Smoke is prevalent throughout the image from firing on both sides. Soldiers lay dead as the landscape is terrorized around them. Broken trees destroyed by the gun gunfire. The focal point, however, is the rock which you see behind me. Confederate soldiers used this rock as protection from Union fire as they assaulted Culp's Hill. However, this sketch isn't the final product. Forbes would have gone back and created a painting, and this would have been mass distributed and something that has now created an iconic image of the fighting on July 2nd. Sketch artists were vital for, under, for the public's understanding of the war. Although photo photography is the medium most people think of when they think of images of the war, it was actually not that widely used during the war. In fact, images of uh, the war through sketches were much more prevalent because photos could not be mass distributed and they also couldn't capture motion in the same way that sketches and paintings could. Instead, sketch artists risked their lives to capture images and accounts of the war. These images could be printed in newspapers and circulated widely to not only illustrate battle scenes, but also camp life and marching. People on the home front were hungry to learn more about what happened on the front during the war, and these images served to shed light on the truth of the battle. Forbes' depiction of the fighting on Culp's Hill on the evening of July 2nd and the morning of July 3rd became a vital piece of art and a first-hand account of battle. It is yet another way we as historians can piece together what truly happened during the battle. Thank you.